Hello, Monetization Nation. One of the most important factors of monetization is creating a great product that people want to buy. However, the process of creating and developing a new product can be very daunting. In fact, more than 30,000 new products are launched every year, and 95% of them fail. The source for that is Harvard Business School. Moreover, only 40% of developed products make it to market. And of that 40%, only 60% will have any success at all. The source for that is Mar the Marketing Research Association. On today's show, I'm joined with Bob Healy, who is a true product creation expert and an engineer. Today, Bob and I discuss how he created his very successful grill gun, and Bob explains his process and secrets for product creation and product development. Tectonic shifts are constantly transforming the earth and business, causing destruction and huge growth opportunities. I'm Nathan William, the host of Monetization Nation, where we learn how to leverage business tectonic shifts to transform monetization. Today I'm joined by Bob Healy. Bob is the founder and CEO of Grill Blazer. Grill Blazer makes a super cool product called or a line of products called the grill guns. I'm going to light the sous vide gun. So I turn on the propane and I light it and you can I'll hold it here where you can see the flame. In addition to his work with Grill Blazer, uh, Bob has a long career as a consultant helping different organizations do product development um, process development and business development. He's an engineer who loves troubleshooting the root cause and creating creative solutions. And today, in addition to learning about his super cool business, we're going to talk about his, his uh, process and stories and secrets about product uh, creation and product development. Thank you so much for joining us today, Bob. Sure, Nathan. Thank you for inviting me. Absolutely. And, and the reason we have Bob with us today is um, as we focus on monetization, creating that super cool product is a really important part of monetization. In fact, that's probably the most important place to start is making sure you have something really good to sell. And, and that's, this is what Bob's really good at. So we're going to learn from an expert who, who has a career in creating super cool products. Would you tell us a little bit more about your career? Maybe start from the beginning. Tell us your story of becoming an expert product creator and an entrepreneur. And yeah, if you go back to the root of why I'm an engineer and a businessman, it really is because I see the, I see the finish line faster than anybody else. The easiest way to look at it is, is I don't necessarily uh, know what I wanna do but when I discover what I want to do, then I know what it ends up looking like, what the, the goal. Like, for instance, when it's remodeling a house, maybe uh, go back to when I was a lot younger and I would buy a house and flip it. And so what, what, what I do, I would see what the potential is to uh, redo the house. And I know what it looks like. And then I just go make it look that way. And it doesn't matter if I've ever done it before in the past. I just have the ability to see the end. The big picture is the way I look at it. And the most successful people really have the ability to look at things from the big picture. They don't get narrowly focused at where they are. They have to see what the end looks like and realize that that end is manageable through something. You have to do something to see how you're going to get the end. A lot of people have great ideas. A lot of people have crazy ideas that end up being great ideas. But most people don't have either the depth of understanding what it takes to get to the finish line, to know if it's even possible for them, it's possible for somebody else. If I wanted to shoot hoops and, and be an, a star basketball player, I just don't have the physical capability of dominating on the court. And as much as I think I can hit a golf ball into the cup in one stroke off the tee, I just can't do that. Other people are better at it than I am. But 
whenever you want to accomplish something, you have to know what it is that you're trying to accomplish and do you have the wherewithal to make it happen? So for me, deciding uh, on what I wanted to do, what I'm doing right now came as a process of uh, things that were sort of opportunistic for me. I had I designed a lot of products for other companies, working as an engineer, working as a vice president, working as the president, whatever, working for another company to uh, meet their agenda and improve the performance of either their products or their processes or their business, whatever. And uh, I had been working for American Electric Power developing, um, developing wind power in Texas just uh, contracts, negotiation, uh, working with people who have the ability to create wind power and move it across the state and connect them up with American, uh, American Electric Power, who I was a contractor for. And I enjoyed doing that for, oh, six years or so, but I was a contractor. And when they said, you know, uh, we've spent a lot of money on research, figuring out where we need to save money. They said, we need to get rid of all of our contractors. Okay, I was a contractor. So I had a choice of either working for them or going and finding something else to do. And since I was not wanting to work for them, I went to go find something else to do. And the way that happened was I, I just uh, told my wife, guess what? I'm not working for AEP anymore. And I... I'm going to make a big long list of what things I'd like to do and start ticking them off. So we spent a few days making that list of things. And what I'm working on right now is, was the third thing on the list. So I prioritized what I thought was important. And I thought at any time I could come up with something new that I wanted to do. And I would just need to, uh, find out whether or not its priority took precedence over what it is that I was currently working on. So um, after I devoted a good solid year to two other projects that preceded this one, I actually developed them both. I finished the development of the product. I figured out what it would take to be successful in the business of doing that product. And they were both products. One was a brand new product that had never been thought of or seen before. And the other one was a product that there's a need for in an entirely different uh, genre, but it was a multi-billion dollar industry that's very mature. And so when I figured out what it would, what my entrance into that market was going to look like and what it was going to cost and whether or not I was going to have any personal satisfaction and what the end result looked like. Yeah, I, I, I had the ability and the, and the discipline is the right word for it. Discipline to not proceed down a path that was not going to be where I wanted to end up. So it was actually in December of 20, let's see, was it 2017? Yeah, 2017, um, that I was standing out barbecuing at, at my barbecue. It's in December in Oklahoma where I live. It's cold, snows, not all the time, but it's always cold in December. And I was outside on the, at the grill uh, cooking food because that's what I like to do. We have family over and we, I fix a meal out on the, on the grill and everybody enjoys it. But the way I've been grilling food for decades, eh, two decades for sure, is I, I like charcoal grilling. And there just are not a lot of people who like to charcoal grill when snow is blowing by. I just really like the way charcoal grill food, charcoal grilled food tastes. So I thought, what is it? I mean, what the way I light a charcoal grill is I would go to the, the local hardware store and buy a, um, a propane torch, a high powered propane torch. And it depends on the part of the country that you live in. Some, some parts of the country, they call it a pear burner. Some call it a roofing torch. 
some call it a weed burner. There are all kinds of different high powered, you know, 400, 500,000 BTU torches available. And I use that to just um, heat the charcoal up pretty much instantly and heat up the, the charcoaler. So I'm standing out there in the cold, taking the steaks off the grill. And I thought, what? this is my next project. What is it gonna look like when I've developed whatever it is that I need to make this be a thing? In other words, to be able to year round grill and enjoy the fact that you can, uh, you can light a charcoal grill much faster than you can with a, a gas grill or in any other method of lighting a grill, just to spray it with high t intensity fire because the steel grill can handle it as long as you don't deliberately try to melt the grill, which you can do too, but that's not the goal. The goal is, is to light your charcoal and cook your food. So I just started talking about that with my uh, sons-in-law and my sons, and they were the, I, I, the, it's a collaborative effort. I don't have all of the um, the greatest ideas in the world. I only know what I know. And your audience is going to be the same way. They only know what they know. And if you don't reach out beyond what your skill set is to find people who will augment what you know, eh, you're pretty much stuck where you are. So I said, what's it going to take to make a torch that people want to use? Because for years, people have come to my house and they've seen me light my charcoal grill in, you know, a minute and start cooking food. And nobody goes home and does that. The reason is, is because it's just kind of ungainly. You take a, you take a, uh, let me see if I can step back here and show you a, a big, long, let's see, here we go. Four, three foot, four foot long pipe with a fire bell on the end and kind of, hold it up in the air and, and point it down at your grill and have a big 20 pound tank uh, uh, propane attached to it. And yes, it's very functional, but you're just not gonna get people to do that. Nobody has ever said, I wanna do that too. So it was important to me to be able to offer this to the world because it is such a great way to, to actually light your grill, uh, sanitize the grill grate that you're cooking food on, heat it up. You can even, when you're all said and done, you can even spray the charcoal with water and put it out and close the lid if you've got a covered grill and go in the house. And the whole process is just a, a matter of trying to cook your food, not a matter of trying to start a charcoal grill. It takes you 40 minutes to light a charcoal grill. Um, you know, by the time you put your charcoal in a chimney or soak it up with lighter fluid. And, and if you do the lighter fluid route, then it's just nasty hydrocarbons. Yeah, it that, doesn't taste good at that point. No, it doesn't taste good. So it was one of my sons-in-law said, well, if you're going to do this, then it has to look like a gun. <laughs> Let's make okay, it so that's where it started. Yeah. Right? Well, it has to look like a gun. No, you can't make something look like a gun inexpensively because guns aren't cheap. You know, it can be a, a bent pipe, right? We can color it whatever you want. Some sort of aluminum pipe that's bent and, and allows you to be ergonomic in the way you hold it and display, mm -hmm. and, you know, and shoot the fire onto the grill. No, no, it's got to look like a gun. Well, why? It's because people think it's cool. Yeah, that's right. And it that's looks it. Super cool. What you've made looks great. And it is great. As a matter of fact, one of my earlier conversations with a, 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 an attorney that I was interviewing in order to be able to determ who, determine who I wanted to be my legal counsel, um, he, he was really excited about the product. And I said, well, I just have to ask you this question. You've just met me. You've just seen this product. You're telling me you want to get one. And I want to know why, because does it have to, you know, does it have to look like something that's likely to be controversial? And he said, I said, if I just made it at his bent pipe and was purple, you know, just honestly, would you buy it? And he goes, no. Yeah. 
And, and I said, well, why do you want to buy this? Because it looks cool. Yeah, that's right. I mean, it's a simple thing. So you have to figure out what the market wants. What I am in the engineer, the solution oriented person is I'm happy with a bent pipe, you know, because I'll use it. And I would spend all of my time and energy convincing people that they too need to use some sort of fancy bent pipe, you know, because I can keep the cost very low to do that. And, uh, but that's not what's going to sell. So then I had, then I had to say, okay, I've employed a lot of engineers over the past that, have, that are doing this. I'm currently unemployed, trying to figure out, trying to figure out what I am going to do. So uh, I guess I better learn how to design and build a gun. And so I did that. I, I bought some software that was 3D software and a 3D printer. And I started creating the grill gun. I didn't know what it was called. I didn't know what it was called for six months. But you saw but, the first line. You knew what you were shooting for. Right. Literally. There you go. I knew what I was shooting for. So, um, so it, that, that was in, that started in uh, basically the 1st of January of 2018. And is December of 2017, but by the time I decided I was going to actually go down this road and had an idea, it was January. And then by May, I was holding my very first grill gun. It, it still wasn't called a grill gun because I hadn't figured out the the name, right? I, I, I toyed, it, toyed around with the idea, but I was still a little bit nervous about creating something that would be so controversial, even though I'm very much a fan of guns and uh, very much a libertarian mindset individual. I um, reluctant to alienate half the population. You know, just like this is something that guys like, so I'll just call it a man tool. Well, then that alienates the fairer sex, mm -hmm. and they wouldn't want to buy it because it's a man tool. So, anyway, it's you have to figure out all of the aspects of of how to how to design something people want and then uh, create it and then manufacture it and finance it. I mean, it's just, just a whirlwind of things that need to be done to start a business up from scratch. This is what I call the sous vide gun. And there's a big story about sous vide. Let's see, I'll put my hand yeah, out of way so that you can see That's it. That's super cool. So sous vide is a, um, a method of, of uh, cooking meat right it's but it's kind of blase um here is the grill gun the grill gun is like the sous vide gun only bigger i have to step back to fit it all in the screen if you were consulting me and i wanted to develop a physical product um could you share with me what you think your top secrets and strategies would be so that i could i could come up with a highly profitable product I can. Uh, the first thing I would do is find out what you bring to the table because you have to look at a product that you want to develop is how are you going to actually make it happen? Too many people believe that just because they have a good idea, someone's going to want to do it. Someone's going to want to um uh, have them make money for, um, they would, people will gravitate to it and they'll just love it. And in the, in the process of creating Grill Blazer, which is the, the umbrella company for all things cool and gun uh, when it comes to uh, charting, starting charcoal or, or lighting fires, I had to figure out well, I, because of my depth of experience, I knew that I, I could either find the people, meet the people, um, build the team that it takes to be successful. I knew I had that experience and I didn't have to lean on anybody because when an obstacle showed up, I would just go find the right resource and solve that problem. So in advising you, you have to 
you have to have that same depth of understanding of how difficult this process is because everybody who does, thinks of something and, and, and wants to invent something, they think that the whole world will um, come to their door and just fawn all over it. And some things are very, very few are, they fit that model and it, it actually works that way. But most of the time, it's a tremendous amount of hard work. And if you are not willing to go the distance, you won't be successful no matter what. And so the first bit of advice I would have to you is just look at yourself for you to look at yourself and say, do you have what it takes? Because if at any time you have to say, uh, no, I don't, um, but somebody's going to help me. I mean, it's just not going to happen. Somebody's not going to help you. It's hard to, uh, to get people to help you. And everybody's going to look at it when it, and when it comes to any sort of product development is, is really what's in it for them. And you're borrowing their time. And how are you compensating them for that time? Are you giving them a piece of the company? And I mean, I, if, if I had developed all of the things that people brought to me as a con engineering consultant that was going to make, you know, millions of dollars because they're just great ideas, all of them, um, they, do, they don't go anywhere because I, I'll tell them right up front, the same that I would tell you. I said, well, if you want me to design this and you want me to build this and make it happen, how are you going to finance that? How are you going to make it happen? Because I'm going to cost money and every step along the way, there are people that are going to cost money. How are you going to make that happen? Um, just giving me a piece of nothing, calling it a, you can have part of the company. Well, that's nothing. You, a piece of nothing. You have nothing when you come to me and you want me to turn it into something so that you have something so that I can have a piece of it. No, thank you. So if you can't look at it and say that I'm, you know, that you're coming to me and you're asking for advice and, and I tell you that you need to find somebody to do this or that, if you're not willing to do that, you know, then you really have got to, um, figure out that you really just need to work for somebody else who does have that. You're surrounded by millionaires and billionaires in everything that you do. We're talking on, um, you know, a video conference that's made possible by people that had vision. And just because you come up with a better way to have vision, you know, uh, doesn't mean that you can actually bring it to reality. And so everything that, we enjoy in the Western world in, in the form of technology or um, uh, products that we use, they're always done by somebody or somebodies that are connected well enough to actually be able to make it happen. So that's the, the, the answer to your question, I guess. Thank you so much, Bob, for sharing your stories and secrets with us today. Here are some of my key takeaways from this episode. Number one, the most successful people have the ability to look at the big picture. They see what the end looks like. Number two, it's not enough to have a great idea. It's equally important to understand if we have what it takes to get this idea to the finish line. Number three, it takes just as much discipline to know when to stop as it takes to know when to proceed. Number four, if we don't reach beyond our skill set and find people who will augment what we know, will be stuck where we are. Number five, before we put time and effort into developing a product, we must ask ourselves if we have what it takes for our product to be successful. If you enjoyed this interview and want to connect with Bob, you can find him on LinkedIn or at grillblazer.com and we'll include links to both of those on the blog post for this episode. Did you like today's episode? then please follow these channels to receive free digital monetization content. Number one, get a free monetization assessment of your business or subscribe to the free monetization e-magazine at monetizationnation.com. Number two, please subscribe to the Monetization Nation podcast or YouTube channel. And number three, please follow Monetization Nation on Instagram and Twitter. What strategies have you used to build and launch a profitable product? 
please join our private Monetization Nation Facebook group and share your insights with other digital monetizers. Thanks for joining us for today's episode. I wish you success in your monetization efforts. Do you want to become a better digital monetizer? To receive great monetization stories and secrets, please go to monetizationnation.com and join free. And if you liked today's episode, please subscribe to the show and share it.